Hello and welcome to the Safety Goals Podcast with Justin Torres and Charlie One presented by Injury Free. This is episode three with our special guest, Jesse Heck. Justin, Jesse's going to bring a, a great perspective as many of our Injury Free team members do as being a former athlete. Um, she was a gymnast in uh, college and she's got some great experiences in talking about uh, you know, what it is to be a collegiate athlete and play at a high level. So uh, another great episode for us to share with our guests about that, what's coming down the road. Well, we love to hear the athlete's perspective, Charlie. And without further ado, let's get into the show. We are now with Jesse Heck from Injure Free. Jesse, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good. Doing Good. all right. Glad to have you. Yes. Thanks for having me on. So, Jesse, we know that you have been a value member of Injury Free for quite some time now, and I was wondering if you could just kind of elaborate on your role within Injury Free and how it's evolved over the time since you've been uh, with the company. Yes, of course. Um, so I've been with Injury Free for about eight and a half years now. I started right after I graduated from the University of Maryland. I started part time here, um, worked a lot in the data, analyzed the injury reports that were coming in from all of our clients played a role in the um, support and the onboarding of new clients. And I've just slowly worked my way up to um, now I'm the director of account management and I oversee what's going on with all of our accounts. And I'm working alongside our developer to, you know, fix software bugs and uh, produce some new features. I love the, uh, the, the, the trip down memory lane. It's crazy to hear you say all that out loud, Jess, it's been that long, but um, take us back a little bit further and, and talk a little bit about your in, in engagement with sports. Um, I think, you know, when did you get started? What have sports meant to you? And uh, take us through some of your athletic career. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Sports. Um, when I think about it, it's, it's really my whole life. I started um, gymnastics when I was four and then um, I sort of stayed in that. I did a lot of other sports while I was growing up, soccer, volleyball, softball, um, all from, you know, probably six until 12 when I had to sort of choose one as gymnastics was getting a little more demanding. And that's the one I went with. Um, I love the sport. Um, and it took me to uh, the University of Maryland, where I competed there for four years. Um, and that's pretty much my <laughs> career. Um, I your main in events in uh, in um in gymnastics uh it was all around until I went to college which is vault bars beam and floor and then during college I focused on bars and beam what were some of the um I guess less not necessarily lessons but what were some of the benefits that you felt you took away how did looking back now at that youth career um what were some of the pieces of youth sports that you took with you that helped shape who you are today yeah, which is crazy to think about. Um, you don't even realize what you're, you, you know, going through, what you're learning at such a young age. But looking back, um, I really think time management, um, consistency, the how to be a team player, um, you know, work well with others. Um, like I mentioned before, have a goal and, you know, do everything you can to reach it. Um I, I feel like I am able to uh, take criticism and, you know, work with it and, you know, not take it poorly, but, you know, use it to my advantage to get call, better. Call that coachability is how we like to bring <laughs> that one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Did it, do you feel like it mattered if you were doing a, a rec sport, a high school sport or a competitive sport? Did, did your attitude change or did you see different benefits or experiences come out of different levels of play yeah definitely um I mostly did all of my other sports besides gymnastics for fun um and that was obviously more laid back I wasn't as intense or competitive um I didn't get down on myself as much when I you know missed a basketball shot um so I feel like they were good for different reasons um you know I liked the interaction with at, you know the young age hanging out with my friends and just that community there and then obviously in the gym you know I was more focused and def definitely different life lessons in in all 
ranges of, you know, competitive play. Sports are in full swing 24 seven, which means athletes are bound to get injured. Luckily, there's Injurefree, a software platform used by youth sports organizations and schools that was developed to help coaches, parents, and administrators communicate injuries that occur and ensure a safe return to play. These sports safety networks are essential for sports teams working to provide the safest possible environment for their families. For more information or to schedule a demo, please visit www.injurefree.com. That's www.injurefree.com. And I remember um, back in the beginning, you were also coaching a bit too, right? Uh, after college? Yes. Yep. I coached uh, for my old club gym and a couple high schools, which was an awesome experience. Sort of see it from the other side, uh, which... What do you what do you miss now most about coaching sports in general, just being out there every day? What are some of those things that you miss the most of? Uh, I miss it all, really. Um, there's an adult class that I sometimes take to try to get myself <laughs> out there and I'm quickly, you know, realize that I'm not as good as I once was. Um, but I just love the feeling of being, you know, <sighs> It's so hard to um, put in words, but I guess I really do miss competing, which I'm not going to be able to get back. But even just the laid back, you know, practice, which is really the everyday, you know, more, obviously more of what you do than, you know, the competitive floor. And I just miss that every day. I miss the structure. And then coaching, um, like I want to, I want to gymnasts and youth sports athletes in general to have the great experience that I did and I want to be able to help them if I'm able to um, achieve you know their goals and if that if they're not looking to be competitive to just have fun and be active and just be physically you know moving their body which is always good yeah (laughs) It's, it's funny, whenever I talk to former athletes, um, and usually at the higher levels, when we talk about, you know, beyond high school into college pro sports, a, a common theme I hear a lot is, uh, it's the locker room, it's the camaraderie, it's the teammates, it's like you're saying the every day. Um, and there's so many different aspects, but it, it's hard to miss that or, or hard to hard to get that anywhere else. Um, but I guess coaching also, you know, can bring that out. Because I remember when I was coaching, football, baseball, et cetera. It was, you know, just being around the team was a lot of fun. And uh, just hearing, you know, the, the high school kids just, you know, talk about random stuff. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just have to scratch your head about what the, you know, some of the topics, but it's always fun. It's always, you know, being loose, uh, being outdoors, if you can be right for you in the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the things that you don't miss? What are some of the hardest parts about sports that maybe, you know, you're glad they're behind you? Yeah. Um, and going back to your point real quick, there is nothing like the teammates that you make and just that camaraderie and you just know each other on a completely different level and you can relate to everyone. Um, you know, all your friends and my teammates are now my closest friends, um, and they'll be lifelong friends. Um, but something I don't miss, um, I would say, I would say my flexibility uh, not, not physical flexibility, but just uh, in life, um, gymnastics being particularly, you know, grueling and a huge time commitment. You know, we were up early taking, uh, practice before or left in weights before class, went to school, went right to practice, had to lift more weights. We had required study hall. Um, you know, our, our day was just, completely scheduled from when we woke up to when we went to bed and there was not a lot of room for free time. Um, so I feel like since I've, you know, stopped, I've been able to, you know, pursue new hobbies, pick up some things that I wasn't really able to do back when I was, you know, super competitive there. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm laughing. I'm thinking about four 30 in the morning, it's pitch black <laughs> out freezing cold. And we had to go down and do plyometrics and whatnot at the stadium for football, things along that. And, you know, in the middle of January, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I'm like, Oh yeah, no, I, I definitely don't, don't miss that. <laughs> that part. That was the worst. Or yeah. the, the, the hundred degrees outside, you know, sweating in August, that kind of stuff. Yeah. The stair <laughs> runs across the whole football stadium. I could do yeah. those too. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's a trade-off, right? I mean, all of the positive, you know, the memories, uh, the, like you said, the character building, lifelong friends. I mean, it's a trade-off and mm -hmm. uh, it almost feels like any, any goal worth fighting for or worth uh, uh, achieving, um, there's going to be sacrifices along the way. And we make those choices as we go through as athletes. But I think you also brought up a great point um, when you play sports or you're involved with athletics at a certain level and uh, you, you begin to know who you can trust. You see your teammates, your coaches under fire, you see them in stressful situations and you, you live through those moments together to a point where you can really achieve uh, you know, a, a level of trust beyond any kind of, you know, any other relationship because you've seen them in a moment where they are them true, their true selves and you know how they're going to perform under pressure. Um, and I think that's another unique capacity that sports brings out for people and another unique, um, uh, I guess, character building again, but uh, just in development, personal development um, mindset that youth sports brings for kids also, uh, which is great to hear you talk about, you know, the giving back and wanting to see that for other people. I feel, I believe that's truly a cycle that if you're, if you've been in sports at a certain level, if you've engaged, you've had positive experiences, you want to share that experience for the next generation as well. So, mm -hmm. well, let's, let's, let's shift a little bit into the world of sports. Uh, you know, you've got a, a good perspective. Um, I think what's our statistic nowadays, we hear about 2% of the kids who play sports in high school end up going to play college. So you're top 2% in that regard. Um, you know, now that you're seeing the world from a different lens and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis at Injure Free, um, what are some of your, I guess, you know, uh, viewpoints now? Has that changed how you see the athletics world? Um, not too much. I feel like I have, uh, I can relate more with really what we're doing, the coaches, the athletic trainers that we work with. Um, Cause really it's, it's the same, same old stuff that's happening. The kids get hurt. They're wanting to come back. They're having to go to physical therapy. The, you know, the coach will might want them to come back, but you know, we need to wait till the athletic trainer clears them. So as things have definitely progressed um, since I've been, you know, out of play, but um, it boils down to, you know, at, at this level, when kids want to be in the game, we want to keep them obviously in the game and as healthy as we can. Um, so really, I'm just seeing it from from that perspective and, and, you know, doing everything I can to help this whole process, you know, be streamlined because um, I lived it. And I, you know, I know, um, you know, you and everyone on this team is trying to do everything we can to make their experience, the you know, the best it can be. I was going to say, Jesse, you bring up a great point about, you know, you were an athlete that has lived it on both sides and you've seen it from the athlete's perspective and someone who works within, you know, keeping the athletes safe. Have you noticed since joining the side of injury free where you're looking into athlete safety at a higher level, whether or not there's been a change in the industry since joining? Because you are one of the more seasoned members of the injury free team, having probably a better outlook on that than most. Yeah, I think so. Um, especially around, which I obviously didn't know when I was, you know, a 10 year old gymnast, just flipping around for fun, you know, all the different laws and more of the legal side of things that I've definitely learned since being in injury free and that I see has progressed throughout the years that I've been here. Um, the laws and legislations that each state or each club, you know, might require. Um, that's been a very interesting you know, piece that I've gotten to learn about. Not many youth sports administrators began their careers with the dream of negotiating insurance rates. Most have the love and passion for the game and saw it as a way to inspire the next generation of youth athletes. However, nowadays insurance can be the single greatest cost for a youth sports organization. At American Sports Insurance Services, we've done the work for you and created the single most comprehensive youth sports insurance program on the market. We did it by aggregating the largest youth sports injury database in the world. Let us do the heavy lifting and represent you for all your risk management needs. For more information or to get a quote, visit www.getamsys.com. That's www.getamsys.com. 
I think, you know, gymnastics is also a unique sport. They've certainly been under fire, USA Gymnastics, for some of the protocols around child safety, child abuse. And um, so, I mean, they're living it on a day-to-day basis. Do you feel that the sport itself um, it has recovered or is, uh, do you feel that they are doing, taking the steps necessary in a way to recover from some of the, uh, the scandals that have been over the last few years? Yes, oh, um, that is terrible. And I'm not sure if they fully, fully have recovered, but I do think they are, you know, USAG is doing everything in their power to, you know, make the situation right and make going forward, you know, obviously way better than it, than it had been in the past. So I wouldn't say it's, it's completely back, but I do think they are taking the steps, you know, that are required and definitely needed in order to, you know, fix what was going on. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. We've been having these conversations now and uh, a recurring theme is that it's unfortunate. We get to these points where something bad has to happen before we start to make these changes. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, you know, with uh, all of the events that have transpired over the last few years, um, a lot of folks are trying to push and keep this agenda, this talk track in, uh, in play. And I've seen folks like Dominique Dawes or Simone Biles, you know, a lot of gymnastics at a high profile level over the years uh, continue to use their platform to accelerate change. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and you, and you hope that we can get to those points. So it's, and it's always the question, it's why aren't things better now? Uh, how do we create those systematic types of changes? But you work with a lot of administrators at a high level when we do our, uh, our deployments and our rollouts. What, what, share some thoughts about the conversations you have, um, I guess, just from a day one perspective. What are some of the topics that you talk about when you speak with these folks who are directly responsible for the children's care and their in their oversight. What are some of the questions they ask you? What are some of the talk tracks when we talk about risk management and improving the safety in their organization? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're they're definitely just trying to keep everyone in their organization safe. And we talk through, like I said, some of the high level stuff that's you know actually being required of them, whether they you know, are needing coaches to go through certain training or certain, you know, watch certain videos and do quizzes um, down to parent signing certain papers or watching certain things. So we go over all of those, you know, laws and rules essentially that are required by all of their members within their, you know, state. And then also just as an injury-free, you know, we offer additional ideas and recommendations that we've seen work in other organizations, whether that's maybe a particular compliance material that isn't necessarily required, but would be super helpful. For example, the sudden cardiac arrest uh, material that we have in our platform that we offer or the heat illness training, um, just some examples like that we always bring forward to them. And a lot of the times, you know, they're like, yes, of course, if it's going to, you know, help our members, we're in. Um, and again, it is, we make it as easy as possible, which is awesome to, you know, provide those to our users um, for them to get, you know, as trained and as being able to help these athletes as much as possible. What's, what do you think the number one, um, What's the number one concern that you hear the most about? And then on the other side of that, what do you feel like the number one piece of advice that you provide is most helpful that people latch on to? Mm-hmm. Um, I would say number one would probably be concussion management. Um, just making sure that if the kid has a concussion, they are definitely out of play and that they are staying out of play, that they're following those return to play protocols. And our system is loaded with concussion trainings, concussion manuals. Um, So if that is their main concern, um, we'll be able to provide that specific organization, organization, all of our materials for parents, athletes, ATs, everyone and coaches, you know, all of those uh, training materials so that they are super familiar with concussions. And then also down to training the coaches on that administrator's 
return to play policy, whether they want them, you know, out for a certain number of time to be able to receive a doctor's note definitely before they're able to return to play. So we just have an open conversation with their administrator and, you know, figure out what's most important and what they need out of the system specifically. And we're able to, you know, customize injury free to help that specific admin, you know, care for their organization. That's awesome. And I think, you know, as we look at these types of trends and we see people starting to try to do more, especially again, you know, recent incidences or um, certain scenarios that have brought the safety to light, um, we're seeing more and more people try to adopt those types of changes and provide more back for their members. Do you, do you get any pushback? I mean, are there, are there scenarios where you hear folks say, no, thanks. What we do is good enough. No, I mean, most of the time they are obviously their athletes and their members are their utmost concern. And if we provide them something that's going to help keep them safe or, you know, make their job easier or streamline their current processes, they are all about it. And, you know, they jump on board. Yeah, that's great. That's love. We love to hear the proactive mindset, right? We love to work with people who are trying to create those safe and player and playing environments. Uh, like you said, make it easy for them. Uh, Cause we know there's a lot for these days and I, I don't see any stopping of that trend. I think there's going to be more and more legislative requirements put on you sports in, in, in some ways, rightfully so. Um, but we, you know, I, I think remember, I remember speaking with coaches over the years and them not necessarily understanding their role. We do see, um, adoption by parents and coaches sometimes can be difficult, but um, we do a great job of, of working with those organizations to bring them on board and uh, increase that involvement and that engagement. Hi, my name is Charlie Wund, and I'm the CEO and founder of the Agency for Student Health Research. When I started the company over a decade ago, I aimed to help reduce injuries within youth sports. Since then, Injure Free was created as a risk management software platform and has grown to become one of the leading injury reporting platforms used by thousands of athletic organizations and schools nationwide. Our expansive education library and reporting technology provides the tools administrators need to take the pain out of risk management. As a former high school athletic director and youth sports organizer, I understand the regulatory compliance requirements and need for individual accountability. Our goal is to provide a service that does better than checking the box. For more information or to schedule a demo, please visit www.injurefree.com. That's www.injurefree.com. What about for you as an athlete, looking back throughout your career, is there something that you feel was missing um, that you felt would have been helpful, might've protected some kids or would have been a great resource to have in, you know, you know, as, as an athlete yourself. I mean, I think we, you know, and I'm, and I'm thinking more like trends now, like mental health is a huge component right now in our talk tracks, um, access to medical care and athletic trainers, but also, mm -hmm. you know, how do I get to the right doctor type of questions? So those types of things, but what's something that you feel like was, would have been helpful for you? Yeah, I was just actually going to mention the access to athletic trainers, at least um, during my youth sports, you know, career when I was in elementary school, high school, um, that access was, you know, we, and maybe it's because I did uh, mostly club sports and not so much school sports where they weren't around or they might be more involved in a school rather than a club, but we had no really medical personnel, definitely not in the gym. And then access to one was not as easy as I think it is today with all of our telemedicine options mm -hmm. that we have going on now, um, which is a great partnership that Injury Free is now working with. I think that would have been very helpful um, throughout my career. And then uh, I do think as you get older and you get more competitive, the mental health coach really comes into play. Um, the psychology just around competing and being a high level athlete can really, you know, take a toll on one's mental health. So I think having that readily available would be 
very helpful as well. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can remember times. I mean, it's difficult, you know, being out of play for a certain period of time is always a difficult period. And uh, there's always the pressure to get back in. You don't want to let your teammates down. That can be a susceptible time where those types of resources are certainly helpful. Um, I'm excited to see what types of, you know, how people take advantage of these different types of resources, how they utilize them when they utilize them. Um, it's exciting for me to think about how we might be able to expand some of the traditional health system offerings and, and layer them into more community sports uh, environments and what kind of impact that might have. Um, I don't know if you remember, there was a, a while ago, we had a, a youth rugby athlete who was, uh, had a concussion or a suspected concussion and in our, our system was not cleared to play. And they actually left the club because they couldn't afford to get the evaluation done. Mm. Um, and then they tried to re re-register a different season with a different organization. And we caught them, you know, popped up in the system as they were still not cleared to play asking that question. It's that, it's that kind of story of, you know, a child gets hurt and then we never hear from them again. That's the shame because of all the positive benefits around youth sports um, and they should have access to care. So, you know, just because you can't, you know, afford a doctor's visit doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to play sports. So how do we do that? How do we scale our health system availability um, and get them, you know, make that as available resource for parents and families in those scenarios? Mm -hmm. No, Jesse, I know that Charlie kind of touched on it a little bit about something that you wish were, you know, really focused on more uh, when you were an athlete. But I want to change the question just a slight bit. Is there anything that you could realize within not just injury free, but injury reporting software as a whole? If there was something that you've noticed in your eight years of being here and interacting with the software that you could have totally utilized and would have helped you out as an athlete during your time? Because for me, even five years removed from playing athletics, I had no availability of something like this at my fingertips. But I know for a fact now that this would have made a world of difference in my recovery process and how I trained as an athlete. Yeah. And I think um, one thing as athletes, uh, or I guess one thing that would have helped me in particular was having my you know, parents get involved and know exactly what either the coach or the athletic trainer was saying about my injury um being an athlete you know you always try to downplay your injuries and I was like I'd go home and be like I'm fine I'm fine and then I think if you know mm. my parents you know knew right away what happened they would be you know more able to I guess help me at home recover and then also be in the know to to reach out to whoever I need to and do all that. So I think that the parent aspect is is one great feature that injury free has. And then as well as uh I feel like cross sports, if I got hurt in gym and then, you know, back at school when I was playing volleyball, if my volleyball coach was able to see, you know, my injury or that I was out of play and I couldn't, you know, practice that day instead of just taking my word for it, I feel like that would have helped the whole process of my recovery as well is just different coaches being able to, you know, track the same injury with the same athlete. So I think those are two, two keys that definitely would have helped me personally. Um, if we had injury free back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> Fragmentation in the communications, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Kids are going to want to play no matter what how do we as adults almost protect them from themselves mm -hmm. in those scenarios, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a big gap where we see a lot of issues. Well, yeah. that's awesome, Jess. We really appreciate you taking some time, sharing your story, sharing your thoughts. We appreciate you. Um, and uh, And again, thanks again for spending some time with us. Of course. Thank you, guys. We would like to thank you all for listening to today's episode of the Safety Goals Podcast, presented by Injury I'm your host, Justin Torres, and a big thanks to our special guest. And also, thanks to my co-host, Charlie Wund. To listen to other episodes of the Safety Goals podcast, check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or wherever you listen to your podcasts.